This is it for banking in our country. The Senate starts voting as early as tomorrow on financial reform legislation, specifically on amendments that could either make this bill fix our system or be just another giveaway to the bankers who get the free use of you, your money and mine. Uh, they get the profits, you get the losses. So here's a way, an easy way for you to keep score on whether America is winning or losing. Your financial future, whether you will have a job, whether you will be paying 30% on your credit card while being extracted by a banking system that controls the government, is directly related to the following three bills. Number one, Senator Ted Kaufman and, Sher and Sherrod Brown with their safe banking amendment that would force banks to shed assets to the point where that they could actually fail without taking down the entire system. Bear in mind, it is their absolute size that they use as leverage to basically take the use of all of our money for their benefit and to our detriment. As they have said right here on our air, this bill aims to prevent too big to fail banks from being, yes, too big to fail. The bill has garnered support from progressives like Bernie Sanders, Jeff Merkley, Tom Harkin, Bob Casey, even Senator Jim Bunning, Republican from Kentucky, advocating breaking up those banks today on the floor of the Senate. Officially, no Republicans, however, have donned the white hats yet. But again, there are murmurs, not only from Senator Bunning on the floor, but people like Senator Shelby, John Cornyn, even Senator Tom Coburn, and others who look at this as a critical issue. Senator Brown admits that right now, however, he lacks the votes to advance the crucial amendment, but says they are getting closer. Where will your politician be on breaking up the banks? Check it out. Then, there's Senator Lincoln's derivatives reform plan. Will it survive the amendment process intact? FDIC Chairwoman Sheila Baer now urging lawmakers to scrap Lincoln's, one of Lincoln's provisions that would force banks to separate commercial banking from swap speculating. She said the move could destabilize banks and drive risk into dark, unregulated markets, which is funny if you think about all the risk that currently exists in dark, unregulated markets. <sighs> uh, derivatives uh, are really being properly regulated and traded in light right now, Sheila? I didn't realize that. Uh, still, with opposition to Lincoln's plan building, keep an eye out for it being watered down either by the Treasury Department, the White House, or anybody working for Jamie Dimon and the big banks. Jamie, specifically in J.P. Morgan, has a lot to lose uh, in business. Very profitable to trade derivatives in private, not so profitable to trade them in public. Jamie Dimon hates this bill, uh, or that provision in this bill. Finally, auditing the Fed. Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont has an amendment that would reveal to us how our Federal Reserve is being used as a multi-trillion dollar piggy bank by the bankers to cash in their losing bets as they perpetuate this system of extraction against the American people and its future. This amendment would require the Fed to name the big banks who would continue to take those trillions in secret subsidies counter to the claims that they've, quote, already paid back the bailout money. So the next time you read some journalist or hear somebody telling you how they paid it back, you ask them about the $4.6 trillion at the Federal Reserve, or maybe they just don't know what they're talking about. Uh, this amendment, deeply opposed by the Fed and the White House, because they don't want to admit to the fact that they're running a basically fraudulent banking system with the fraud being hidden at the Federal Reserve. However, our representatives, who are the ones that allow them to tax our money to support this fraud, uh, have started to gain bipartisan support, five Democrats and ten Republicans, including Senator John McCain, Jim DeMint, Chuck Grassley, all in the Senate, all pushing to audit the Fed. The measure's twin was proposed in the House by Libertarian Ron Paul and liberal progressive Alan Grayson, only to be stripped down in the House by the likes of pro-bank Democrat Mel Watt of North Carolina, who effectively castrated the Grayson-Paul Amendment. But do any of these three proposals have a chance of becoming law of any kind? That is not yet clear. Whether it's transparency for derivatives, breaking up the banks, or auditing the Fed, they offer all of us an opportunity to evaluate our political leaders to see where they stand and did they vote for the bailout and are they now refusing to vote for things like this that would prevent future bailouts? Do our politicians indeed work for the banks? You want an easy way to score your politician and vote them out in the fall? There you go. Kaufman, Brown, derivatives and audit the Fed. Joining us now, Democratic Congressman from Florida, Alan Grayson, and live via Skype, Republican Congressman from Texas, Ron Paul. Uh, Congressman Grayson, I will begin with you. Why do we find a libertarian and a conservative like Congressman Paul, who's on the screen next to a, a, a 
a progressive like yourself, and we see the sim similar combination developing in the Senate. Why the combination? Because we're all interested in fighting unbridled government power. Uh, ben Bernanke has the power as the Federal Reserve Chairman to hand out half a trillion dollars to foreigners with a rubber stamp approval from the Open Market Committee and nobody else. Nobody should have that kind of power. He did it before, he'll do it again. That's not the way things should work in any republic, in any democracy. Uh, how do you, uh, Congressman Paul is, the, is really the man who started this conversation some time ago. How do you view the accelerating momentum around the idea, both uh, the bill with you and Congressman Grayson, but also uh, in the Senate? How do you view the momentum? Well, I think the momentum is against us, but I have to make a, my, a, a bit of a correction Please. because... Uh, our bill uh, actually did pass in the Senate. It is in the House version. So uh, Mel Watt tried to undermine it, but we beat him in the committee with the help of Allen. Uh, we got enough Democrats and all the Republicans supported my position on that and our position. But the big question comes up very soon, possibly tomorrow, when Bernie Sanders offers his amendment. And in my understanding, it will be the same as our amendment. So that'll be the real key test. But even if Bernie's amendment passes, it's a long way from over. We still have the president that need to sign this. And then we need the courts. And traditionally, on monetary issues over the centuries, uh, the courts always rule in favor of big government and government control of the monetary system, not free market banking. If you were to look, Congressman, at the White House's vehement refusal or opposition to Senator Sanders' amendment, and you were also to look at the use of the Federal Reserve as a multi-trillion dollar piggy bank to cash out too big to fail banks gambling with America's money, why do you think the White House is not aggressive in trying to root out this problem as you and Congressman Paul are and instead defending it? Go ahead, Congressman Paul. I, I think there's too much at stake, and it's power. It, they have power through the control of money. And I think this is going to end. I think what we're doing is very, very important. It has brought the attention to the millions of Americans about how important the Federal Reserve is. But quite frankly, I think they're going to destroy the dollar before they'll wake up. Because everything is dependent on their uh, ability to print money when they need it. Congress spends money, the deficits are running up, we get into a crisis, everybody gets bailed out, and if you couldn't print the money and couldn't bail out your friends, the whole thing comes crashing down. But if we continue to print this money the way we are, it's going to come crashing down anyway, and it's going to be a lot worse than if we bit the bullet and, uh, and, and changed our ways. Yeah, Cong but, yeah, so Congressman, like, go ahead, Ron. Go ahead, Congressman. Go ahead. Uh, Congressman Grayson, I, I, I look at this like we're a, a man who's certain to have a heart attack five years from now who refuses to acknowledge that fact or do anything to change his or, his or her behavior in advance of that heart attack. It's as if changing your diet to not eat sugar, ch to tr getting the transparency at the Federal Reserve, posting collateral in the derivatives market, and ending too big to fail, which would reveal the fraud that is the massive banking system that is supported at the Federal Reserve, instead of our politicians addressing that fraud now so that we can avoid the apocalyptic uh, version of events, which is the utter collapse of all paper assets in this country as a result of the money printing, which is the future alternative. W what can we do to make people understand the future alternative so that making the modest dietary changes, if you will, and stop eating sugar and actually uh, make the change we need actually happens, Congressman Grayson? I think what you said is true, but I actually think it's far worse than that. What we're seeing is under the guise of monetary policy a vast transfer of wealth from the taxpayers to private interests. And that is accomplished through guarantees by the Federal Reserve that are undisclosed, through loans that are undisclosed, through, through massive multi-billion dollar transactions that, uh, that there's, there's no accountability for. Take the half a trillion dollars in foreign currency swaps that I just described. One man says he wants to do it. Ten others say it's okay with them, and over a thousand dollars for every man, woman, and child in this country is transferred overseas. And I asked the chairman who got that money, and he said, I don't know. That was his answer. I don't know who got the money. What we're going to see is that as the Federal Reserve asserts itself and hands out more and more money to its friends through guarantees, through loans and otherwise, every dollar in your pocket becomes less valuable. Everyone's 401k, everyone's checking account, everyone's investments, they all become trash. 
And that's the result of this, this policy the Federal Reserve has been adopting to help its friends in the names of, of, of saving the system when, in fact, we need to reform the system so it doesn't need to be saved. We need to end yeah. the possibility of too big to fail. We need to end the possibility of bailouts. Yeah. And that's the direction we need to go to and survive as a country, I, I to survive as a civilization. Uh, speaking of auditing the Fed, and then I'll wrap this up, but I'd love to get your reaction before I, I go, Congressman Paul, on some of the disclosures from March of 2004, because right now, if we want to audit the Fed, we have to wait six years, uh, and mm -hmm. then we get released emails, partially released emails that we get to read to politicians six years after the fact, which is where we find ourselves relative to 2004. Bear in mind, of course, the, as we all know, the housing bubble began really its explosion between 04, 05, 06, 07. This from Alan Greenspan, chairman of the Federal Reserve, March of 2004, and I quote, we run the risk, said Chairman Greenspan, by laying out the pros and cons of a particular argument of inducing people to join in on the debate and in this regard, it is possible to lose control of a process that only we fully understand. It. This, he's re referring specifically there to the housing finance and the financing of housing. Uh, also in the room, Jack Gunn, former Federal Reserve Bank president, member of the, the, the Fed, effectively a, a uh, contemporary of the Fed chairman. And I quote him, he's talking about South Florida real estate at the exact same time that the Fed chairman is saying, make sure nobody hears about this because only we understand. And clearly, based on the $23 trillion that we've given them and all the money that the banks continue to take out of the system, they clearly do understand. Uh, Fed Governor Gunn, uh, buyers freely admitting that they have no intention of occupying the units or building on the land, but rather are counting on flipping the properties, selling them quickly at a higher price. Uh, is this compelling evidence for the case to audit the Fed that we are seeing this sort of email and this sort of dissent being hidden from the American people. Absolutely. That makes our point and why it's necessary for us to know what they're doing and thinking. You know, in spite of all the secrecy, there were some economists even back in the early part of this decade that saw it coming, knew it was coming, saw the bubble, uh, predicted it and acted accordingly. But, you know, what bothers me now is those economists who knew it was coming and predicted the crash, uh, they're not uh, ask anything. I mean, they're not being interviewed by the commission to figure out how this uh, bubble occurred and what happened. So uh, I, I think we're locked in on this course. And one of the other reasons why I think nothing ever changes is uh, even though they want to, the, the real problem is it's like an addiction. It, it's like taking a person off drugs. And you do have withdrawal symptoms. For us to argue the case, they shouldn't do this and they shouldn't do that. When you have the bubble, to walk away and let the bubble do what it's supposed to do, that is correct itself, there is some pain, but it's shorter lived than it is when you prop it up, add more regulations and more control and more inflation, more spending. We just compound it. But the withdrawal symptoms are such that the politician never votes to have withdrawal symptoms. Politically, he's much safer by saying, let's vote for the bailout because they only think about a day or two ahead and maybe to the next election at the most. But uh, that's, that's another one of the reasons why we have such trouble in bringing about decent changes. Do you, do you, i got to wrap this to Congressman Paul, but do you think it's a decent evaluation of a politician to see how they vote on the too-big-to-fail amendment, how they vote on audit the Fed, and how they vote on a tr a derivative transparency? Is that a decent way for the average American yeah, to judge yeah, their it's district? Not gonna, it's not going to go by without the people knowing. With the Internet and the grassroots movements that's going on right now, everybody's going to know what they do. <laughs> Do, and I think it's great. Dylan? Uh, yeah, go ahead, Congress. Dylan, it's very simple. If you vote for these amendments, you're for the people. If you vote against me, for the banks. People will remember. All right, listen, I, I can't thank both of you enough for the conversation today. Uh, hopefully we'll do more of it. Congressman Grayson, Congressman Paul, thank you, gentlemen.